in the continuing saga of statistical mechanics that we are trying to develop these, this course, uh, we worked till now um, the microcanonical ensemble and we started the canonical ensemble, we defined the partition function of the canonical ensemble and what we are going to do now, the very fast we derive the most important equation of the canonical ensemble and then we will go on doing some more of thermodynamics with canonical partition function. So that required certain amount of calculations. So uh, first thing to do that uh, the generalization of micro canonical ensemble as I told you this is the most important equation where everything starts from and generalization of that to this is a micro canonical and this is a function of the E, N and V. Generalization of that to canonical ensemble is this thing, is the entropy. They come out of the sum. Then you have, uh, this is 1 over omega, sum gives, gives omega, okay. So this becomes minus KB. So now this sum gives omega, this omega cancels this omega, ln 1 omega is, ln 1 is 0, so then I have minus omega, ln omega, that minus cancels this minus, so I get plus ln omega. So this is the generalization of this to canonical ensemble where energy levels are probability of energy level pj. They should be regarded as equivalent to each other. So this is the again you have to regard as based way as I said regard it as an ansatz or starting point of statistical mechanics just with the two postulates okay and one should be clear about it that every every great theory or every framework starts with certain postulates and certain assumptions. The validity of them are seen by the agreement of the predictions with the experiments. Just like in quantum mechanics, we start with Schrodinger equation and all kinds of things that we assume. One of the major thing is the p square is this one operator representation in coordinate space, okay. Okay, now, so I will just do this uh, upstairs and I told you I will derive what is the most important thing of the partition function. So that is and I mentioned that nobody has an explanation why KB is what value that is takes. Okay. So we just did in the morning that Pj is all right because this is this is the canonical partition function. Okay, all right. Now I am going to take ln of that. This I mentioned bit in the morning. Then I get minus beta ej minus ln qn. Okay. Do not be uh, too much concerned about the uh, subscript and all these things, but canonical partition function with NVT ensemble, you always put N as a subscript and then write TV or VT here. I tend to write TV, but many books like VT, I think there is not much here. Now, I want to go over here. So, I multiply by PJ. I sum over J. Then I multiply it by minus KB. This is my right hand side now. I do that here, I do minus KB and uh, another minus, minus plus, so beta 
के बी पी जे ई जे ओके माइनस पी जे एल एन क्यू एन ओके सो दिस इज माई एस लेफ्ट हैंड साइड सो एंट्रोपी एस इक्वल टू नाउ पी जे ई जे सॉरी यू शुड यू टेल मी आई एम राइटिंग एनीथिंग रॉन्ग पी जे ई जे बिकॉज आई समाइम यू थिंक अहेड और यू डोंट थिंक योर हैंड थिंक्स अहेड एंड सो दिस इज ई एवरेज माइनस बेटा के बी ई एवरेज राइट and this is minus ln qn okay now uh minus kb i have multiplied by kb so this also become plus right plus okay. uh, i have multiplied by minus kb this is the whole thing that i multiply to this quantity so minus minus plus and this minus Minus plus, so I'll have a plus K B N both, and this will also be plus, right? Okay, now, so uh, I, I'll show a little later, but for the time being, I put the value. I'll work it out a little later. This is more, much more detailed derivation. So when I do that, beta K B is one over T, so I get T S equal to uh, E average. Plus K B L N Q N. Okay, I bring this on the right hand side, uh, and uh, this on the left, and this on the right. Uh, so E minus T S equal to minus K B. Okay, I, when I do beta K B T, beta K B is one over T. One over T goes there. You guys are not following. One over T comes here. E minus T S then K B T minus K B T. This is the problem. This L N Q N because this transform here, this go, this goes here, that goes there. So E minus T S is the free energy. So A equal to minus K B T L N Q N. so this is the as i have been saying this is the most important just like we had entropy equal to ln w in canonical partition function so a equal to minus kbt ln qn is the most important most important relation in the canonical partition function and probably can be considered as the most important relation in entire stress theory mechanics because this is the one we use why it is so important uh, as to qualify that statement the most important the reason is that the beauty of hemolytic free energy uh, there is a unique property of hemolytic free energy uh, which uh, can you tell me what is the unique property so this derivation is smooth and nice and bit elegant uh, at the end of the day this nice little and smooth easy flowing derivation gives us this great result okay now i am asking you you must tell me since all of you have done some course in statistical mechanics why this is so useful and so universally used in all theoretical calculation analytical calculation we go via hemolytic free energy analytical calculation unless you have kind of inhomogeneous systems and phase transition we do not go to grand canonical so you have to now tell me why it is so when i sip sip my take my first sip of the coffee yeah that's a good point it's a minimum it is the same it is actually if it is not there as i told you i should have minus in front of a that is the maximum so basic condition is the maximum because the entropy is maximum it follows from the same thing 
So one property is that at equilibrium and we always use that, right? We always use that. That is used in all theories, for example, Landau theory of phase transition. So there is and one more very important property. That's why it uh, because that's shared by all partition functions. Because partition function has to be maximum. Is the partition function which is maximum? And uh, because partition function is the weight of the system. So the condition is the partition function is maximum, like entropy is maximum, okay. Now, but there is something extremely important. Huh? Absolutely, but there is more general than that. You can get every property, equation of state, entropy, pressure by just taking derivative. It is far easier to take derivative. Because when you try to do integration like equation of state, it's far more complicated. So you can get thermodynamic properties. So uniqueness and or unique advantage of this one is that I can get thermodynamics by taking derivatives. Like as you just said, PA equal to minus DADV. This board, I, this board, we can get entropy S from DADT, right? Then I can get compressibility by second derivative, specific heat by second derivative. So again, loudly, tell loudly, huh? Uh, minus uh, minus DADV is okay. Entropy has to be for it, positive. Free energy increases with temperature, too, it should be a positive. But you are right, there should be a T in front of it, not the sign that I might be missing. So check that. But this is a very, very important, as I said, that uh, much of the things that we do, essentially all the uh, Monte Carlo simulations or all these things are essentially attempt to get the partition function. Okay. All right. Now we'll go and do that derivation, which is a little bit more messy, and with this back board which is small, and I so I need space. Now I'm going to show the that beta is one over a v two. Beta, remember beta is in one of the undetermined Lagrangian multiplier in the constraint that comes. Beta comes with the constraint of energy, very important to remember. Alpha came with the number, total number, sum over uh, in the energy level Ej, sum over Nj of all these systems because I went from canonical to micro canonical by building a super system which is micro canonical. So in my super system, which is uh, uh, microcanonical, each member is canonical. And then each member of my canonical, which has a different energy Ej, that allows me, this operation allows me to define a, a distribution Pj. There are many layers here. And in that process, I had to put, when I maximize the omega, the total number of ways, I introduced Lagrangian undetermined method of undetermined multipliers. Beta is one of the undetermined multipliers. Yeah. So, what is that we need to find now? Okay. But as I said, this is a little bit messy. So, I did it today, but I must, must warn you that I am still missing a factor of t. So, now we are going to do this uh, determine the Lagrangian undetermined multiplier. And as I told you, a little, little messy. And in this respect, I want to make a comment of the kind of mathematics we do in statistical mechanics and the kind of mathematics we do in quantum mechanics. You guys are quite familiar with the mathematics we do in quantum mechanics because as I told in the morning that is uh, whatever I do, I land up with a partial differential equation d2 dx2 psi and then plus vx equal to e psi 
d psi equal to d psi and that then is a partial differential equation which we solve this put in the boundary conditions right and these are depending on what vx you have they either become hermite polynomial or legendar polynomial or laguri polynomials and boundary condition is the quantity that makes your energy levels discrete it is very important to know that and that is the hallmark of quantum mechanics. So, it is essentially solving these differential equations and then when you go to numerics again you solve the same differential equation with the potential you introduce a grid and when you want to the excited states then you know uh, then you have to uh, a complexity because you have to deal with uh, nodes and many in the wave function and many other things the derivative taking the second derivative that you have to do of the wave function makes this numerical calculations demanding that is why an army of chemists physicists do not do this kind of game anymore uh, but uh, if you, chemists are doing it because of the molecules and molecules the wave function changes rapidly uh, across the bond and all these things so you have problem. In statistical mechanics however the mathematics is a different nature we do have many partial differential equations we solve but one of the things that we work with probability and many times you need to like, like we had the confusion in the morning how the sample phase space comes. So, much of the mathematics is conceptual and mathematics is because it is on probabilistic and many times the mathematics is rather subtle and one major thing that is in statistical mechanics that this subject is highly mathematical. That is one thing you have to know why people in particular in chemistry find difficult to do stat -mac analytical work because it is highly mathematical. Very soon you land in uh, doing the complex analysis, zeros of the partition function in the complex plane which gives rise to the singularity. Even at that level you will see there are lot of manipulations with the probability theory which are kind of tricky. Okay. So, with this uh, prelude I start with the derivation of beta. So, I start again with p j e to the power minus beta e j by and I am little bit difficulty with the limited portion of the board, but I probably will use the other side now, but then I cannot see from that side to this side. Okay. So, I start again the same way I did before. This is given there also, but uh, I am not too satisfied with the one, the, the sequence of equation that is given there. Because the book is the problem is that you go back. Uh, well, equation 5.1 and then 5.10 and that is a little difficult. Ej, Pj, so all right. Correct, because I have the P j j sum over j, sum over j everywhere. Now I do one thing. You realize both in the microcanonical and grand canonical ensemble, they are also we start with s, then we made ds, because all these thermodynamic Euler equations, we went to differential form of the Euler equation. The differential form of the Euler equation because we want to use essentially fundamental what I call the fundamental equation of uh, which is the fundamental relation of thermodynamics is d equal to Tds minus Pdv that kind of relations that comes in. Okay. So, dE this quantity. It's little tedious, but need to be done. All right. Now, this is the relation we'll need. I'm going to. I'm going to put it upstairs.
Okay. Now I go to definition of PJ that I had the PJ equal to e to the minus beta EJ by partition function. I take the log of that. So ln PJ. So this equation let me write down. Then I'll erase that. That a PJ definition is e to the power minus beta EJ by QN. I take logarithm of that, I get ln pj equal to minus beta ej minus ln qn, okay. So ej is, uh, I bring it on that side. One of the main thing is to do a long analytical calculation that you continuously clear your board or you are doing calculation, continuously change your sheet of paper, go from one to the other. Uh, it is one of the, I see the students make the mistake, they continue working on the same sheet of paper and do all these things and they get confused. Uh, you have to keep your, uh, your things very clear. Okay, so EJ then from here, I bring it on the other side, take on the other side. So then I divide by beta. So minus 1 over beta ln PJ. So this has come to this side. This remains. So minus 1 over beta ln QN. Okay. Right. So now, this is the DE and there is the EJ. So what I am going to do, I am going to put this EJ, this value of EJ here. Huh. So I now going to minus 1 over beta. ln pj minus ln qn into dpj, right? Okay, let me write down a little bit more clearly this quantity de sum over j minus 1 over beta sum over, let me put dpj, this is dpj in front, so dpj and then ej, ej uh, minus 1 over beta ln pj minus 1 over beta ln qn, there is dpj in front. Now I have minus 1 over beta, so minus, so I have this uh, ln pj minus ln qn, so de is, uh, uh, okay, ej, I have 1 over, so I put the ej here, so I have, be careful about the sign that uh, ln qn. 1 over beta dpj ln qn, okay. Okay, so I have de, and this is the pj dj, dpj I have put in, and this is pj d, uh, so I have ln pj, uh, ln pj aj, so I solve from that for ej, and ej will come on the left hand side, and that will bring 1 over beta on the other two terms. Now I have to put this ej back here. So then that I put ej, both of them 1 over beta. So I have this uh, 1 over beta uh, ln pj, uh, ln pj is this thing, the beta. So there is a beta coming here, right? Okay, you have taken it out, okay. That is correct, right? Okay. That 1 over beta stays here, right? Now, 
what happened on the right hand side dpj ln qn is okay na so ln qn is there that i think is okay okay very important thing that i am going to do now pj equal to 1 okay so now that means dpj equal to 0 okay correct okay so that means this term is going to be 0 all right but i have to keep remembering that so now i have the following relation now that uh, de uh, i still have pj ej so de dpj you guys should have told me i still have this quantity so ej is this but this is still there right so de is this term is there but de this term is uh, correct because i am replacing ln pj i have replaced ln pj so what i have done i have touched this term how i touch this term i have replaced this thing i got from this but i have left this untouched so d will not come with any beta or anything it is just pj d okay now now this term dj can be written as dej dv at constant n and you can if you want constant t dv okay now so this now let me work it through that this is the quantity in microcanonical we have seen that when energy level is changing with volume that's the partial pressure pj okay so we have pj pj dv now this is the definition of average pressure so i have this term done is plus p average dv okay so this is taken care of so this quantity is equal to Uh, equal to PDV. Okay, that part is done. Now I have to take care of this part. Now we know that DPJ, the ln QN, that this term has uh, when DPJ is go to zero. So I am left with DPJ ln PJ. All right. Okay. Now on my entropy, I am going back to my again the derivation of entropy equal to minus kb pj ln pj so my i now have to work on this equation i have to work on this term and then s equal to this quantity So now ds equal to minus kb, I take the d inside, so of the sum I get dpj ln pj minus kb pj 1 over pj I work on that and get dpj all right ln pj i work on that i'll get 1 over pj dpj okay so they cancel i have sum over dpj i already showed sum over since pj equal to 1 conservation condition sum over dpj equal to 0 
so these one these uh, one drops out okay so i have now b s equal to minus k b b p j ln p j okay okay now i already have the following relation here uh, that dpj ln pj is de and uh, dpj ln pj minus minus plus i only had de and uh, beta uh. so uh, my de is and there is one more term which is this term which is pdv so i have this is outside sitting outside so i have here de equal to pdv and then i have that term uh, plus 1 over beta uh, pj 1 over term uh, dpj and npj and npj dpj okay dpj and npj is a uh, ds by kb minus so that i now get I get D E equal to P D V and uh, plus one over beta. Then I have a minus D S by K B. Okay, D S K B. Um, that's okay. No, no, no. It's not that simple. Okay, so this becomes, so I do not know what is beta, remember that, huh? I do not know what is beta. So I have minus beta kb ds, okay. Now I compare with this thermodynamic relation de equal to pdv minus tds, correct. Okay, 1 over beta kb. Now, yes, that from it. So now compare that, that then I get 1 over beta kb equal to temperature. And that means beta equal to 1 over kb. So that the my uh, second Lagrangian multiplier, undetermined multiplier, that one determines by going through this somewhat elaborate process. Is that clear now? So that is actually fairly neat derivation, but you know this is what I was gave this little lecture on mathematics and statistical mechanics that there is a lot of interplay with probability theory and the conservation of probability. So all these things you have to bring in and do that, okay. So now we can go back. So, we have put beta equal to kvt 1 over kvt. Now, I can write my Boltzmann distribution at pj and uh, then now completes my proof that I started with is minus kvt. Then I when I prove this thing, I uh, did not tell you because I proved as 1 over beta, I did not tell you that beta is 1 over kvt. So then this is the most important relation in the canonical partition function. So these two proofs that we did kind of uh, complete the 
major part of canonical partition function, but greater uh, equal to one cavity. And then this is the one I did first because it is a very neat. I did not want to bring the most important equation at the end of this rather elaborate and a bit tedious derivation. So that is what I did uh, this derivation first in the form of KVT and MQN. And we already discussed properties of this partition function. So then the important thing that we already discussed, the beauty is that we can get how come you, you, you are right, no, there is a minus sign. If I increase temperature, I thought free energy increases. Hemolytic free energy, no, minus KBT is there, that probably why. Because if I increase temperature, then partition function will increase, uh, but the free energy will decrease. Okay, so that is, I always think in terms of partition function because that is the weight of the system. So yes, there is a minus here as you pointed out and so that essentially this is the entropy, this is the pressure. And this is the beauty of canonical partition function. This is the canonical partition function done. So we have done microcanonical, we have done canonical.